All right, so I thought I would start by showing you the kind of illustrations that I do in both professional and in my uh, spare time. I'm one of those lucky few people that can actually have their hobbies also be their career. So I draw constantly every day. So this is the kind of stuff that I do. As you can see, it's mostly um, a lot of illustration work that's based on cartoons, and that kind of kind of thing. Obviously, as you can see, I'm a avid Pokemon and anime fan. You can see all this stuff here. So if you haven't had a look at this, I will share the link to my Tumblr account, which is my illustration blog, for you to kind of have a look at. And if you have any questions about how particular things that I created, then I will for sure let you know. Now, all of these illustrations, uh, most of them, are actually done digitally. I use Photoshop in order to do them, um, but today we're going to talk about how to achieve a very uh, similar effect uh, using Illustrator. Now, obviously, Photoshop has a much more painterly feel to, to things, while Illustrator will have a cleaner feel to things, but uh, we'll definitely go ahead and discuss that. Okay, cool. So we'll start with a blank document. Now, uh, the brushes in Illustrator, just over here, the ones that we're going to be using is these guys. However, we're going to be using custom versions of them. Why? Because these guys aren't quite what we need them to be. You see, when I start drawing, it's like, OK, that's cool. I can draw shapes, but the only problem is that it's not really giving me pressure sensitivity. The thing about pressure sensitivity is, um, well, I want my line work to have that professional look that goes from thick to thin and reacts to the amount of pressure that I'm using whenever I uh, put my pen stroke down. <laughs> Now, before I begin, are there any questions or anything that you guys want me to in, to particularly talk about? Because I'm open for suggestions. I can't think of anything at the moment. Okay, no worries. We'll continue then. Alrighty, so what I want to do is I want to have a nice tapering effect so that the, the beginning of my line and the end of the line can, uh, can have uh, a brush stroke effect because right now it's all pretty much the same thickness the entire way through. So what I'm going to show you is how to create a brush that's going to respond to your pressure um, input. I'm also going to show you how to create a fake brush that kind of mimics it as well. Let's start with the real one. Okay, so I'm just going to clear all this. And then go into over here in Illustrator. You can see I've got a whole bunch of panel options here. Now, I like to use Illustrator in its factory settings for a lot of reasons. It makes things easy to find, but also as a lecturer, it just makes it so that things are always in the same place. Now, your illustrator might not have this if you move some things around. Um, so if you want it to look like mine, you just have to go into Window, then Workspace, and then click on Essentials or Reset Essentials, and that's just going to snap everything back into its, its proper place. Now, what I want to do is just here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five icons down. It's my little brush uh, little set here. Now, what I want to do is select one, and we're going to create a brand new brush for me to use. Now, see, there's a couple of brushes here already, and OK, they work fine. So that's obviously a thin brush, that's a thick brush. And this one is a slightly skewed brush that will give me that calligraphy effect of getting thinner in some sides and thicker in others, like that. And this is the same similar kind of effect. Kind of like using one of those uh, calligraphy pens. You can also get uh, custom brushes that will give you a chalk type look whenever you draw. 
But as you can see, it's very limited to being darker where my line originated and eventually fading out. I mean, it, it's a nice effect, but um, it's just kind of tricking you into thinking that it's actually doing something. So, so this one here, the, okay, this one's called an effect one, and that gives me like gene uh, stitching. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a brand new brush from scratch so that we uh, know how to do that and how to apply pressure to it. The first thing that we want to do is click over here and select Create New Brush. We look at this dialog box that's going to come up and it's going to give us a whole bunch of different quest um, options. Let's choose Calligraphy Brush. And first we get to name it. I'm going to call this one Pressure Brush. Just as a shorthand so that I remember that that's going to be my pressure sensitive brush. Now, over here, do you see how there's three dots in a row? This means that the, the dot in the middle is your standard one. The dot on the left is how small your brush is going to get, and the dot on the right is how big the dot's going to get, depending on pressure. But right now, it's all fixed. As you can see, all the settings are set to fixed, which means that it's all going to stay pretty much similar the entire way through. Now, I'm not going to play around with too much of the shapes, because that gets a little tricky. What I want to play around is the sizing. So let's go down to sizing over here, and instead of having it fixed or random or any of this, let's just set it to pressure. And OK, um, the computer now knows that we want to change it according to pressure, but do you see how these guys are still all the same size? So this means that the computer doesn't yet know that uh, you wanted to change or in variation in sizes. So what you have to do is, see here, it says variation of only zero points. You want to start adding some values here so that the computer has a range of how big and how small it's going to get. And you can see how I'm adding to it now. This will now get two points larger if there's extra pressure, or two points smaller if the pressure isn't enough. And here, it's just in uh, standard pressure, it'll be the same. You can go extreme and go the entire way so that it becomes almost insignificant with no pressure and really quite bold when there is a lot of pressure. This over here is just a standard sizing, and this just means that this is going to be, uh, whenever you click on it, this is going to be just a standard sizing of your brush. Let's just keep that at quite a low number because we can always increase that later. All right, once done, we hit OK. Any questions so far? Just want to make sure I'm not losing anyone. All good. Are they supposed to be the same? Sorry, Wayne, I don't know if you were talking. Um, are they supposed to be the same points? I'm just trying to figure it out in mind, looking at my size. No, they're, they're better. It's, it's best if they're not, because then that gives you the variation. You see now, if, if they were the same size, they would just look like this. That's it. Because that's the smallest, that's the biggest, and that's the largest. If they're all the same, there's no variation. However, my new brush has been created, that's just over here, that has variation. And do you see how now, depending on the amount of pressure I'm adding, it gets bigger and smaller. I see. Um, when I'm clicking on my brush, I'm just trying to do it myself. And if I change the variation, it changes the size um, at the same time. Is that is that wrong? You mean it's changing this size or this size? Um, oh, it's changing the size on the left, at the bottom one. So, so yeah, yeah. So it's it's saying that the same. The pressure is in the middle, and it's. Just, two points and two points variation. Is that is that fine? Yeah, that's great. The two points okay. variation just means it's going to get two points larger and two points great. smaller. Great. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> no worries. OK, now here's a little bit of an issue that I, as an illustrator, have with Illustrator. Um, <laughs> OK. Um, I worked pretty hard to get specific kind of 
pen strokes or uh, such a smoothness to my line. Now, Illustrator has this thing that it tries to smooth out your line, and I, for one, find it a little condescending, but <laughs> it's just a setting that Illustrator has. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to draw a circle. Okay, so that was just a very, uh, I'm just kind of holding it, uh, so um, Illustrator hasn't touched it yet. You see, it's not perfect, but when I let go, Illustrator smoothed out the edges to go, oh, you meant to have a more perfect stroke. Uh, check it out one more time. So on purpose, I'm going to make it a little bit shaky. Illustrator's like, no, 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 I'll fix it for you. And it's just trying to smooth out your line. Hmm. <laughs> I find that to be a little bit funny, but uh, if you don't want that to happen, you can always double click on the brush setting over here, and you're going to get this option here that's called Fidelity. The, it's in the center right now. If you move it closer to accurate, then it's actually going to not uh, smooth it out too much. But if you change it to smooth, it's actually going to quite um, edit out your line a fair bit. Going, oh no, you didn't mean that to be a stroke. Let's let's make some things a little straighter. <laughs> I guess this will be good for typography. Makes it look so much nicer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so um, let's get a move on and let's actually start sketching something out. Okay, now when you want to sketch something out, uh, one of my biggest advices to students, and one of the things I see a lot is students try to always make their first stroke their final stroke. And when it comes to illustration, it doesn't always work that way. Actually, there is a fair few illustrations, um, I mean, there's a fair few steps uh, when it comes to getting something illustrated. Now, let me just uh, very quickly show you something. Let me just get this up here. Um, yeah, this is a picture that I just did just before. Uh, I drew this yesterday. And um, it's in Photoshop, but the same kind of uh, principles apply. Now, <laughs> Yes, it's um, a mockery of Mario and Adele's new song. Um, good times. I wanted to jump in the trend, and this is what came up, I came up with. But let me just scale back some of these bits of the illustration, because I want to show you something. I guess. Okay. Okay, there we go. So this is what the final ended up looking like. However, the original sketch looked very different. Or at least, I drew it three different times before I was happy enough to proceed. So here's my initial sketch. This is just blocking and let me kind of um, see where I wanted everything to go. Then came details, so I started to put a little bit more detailing in the face. Let me just make that a little bit darker so you can see it. Hmm, it's not working for some reason. Why isn't it getting darker? Oh well. So first I, I did the, the planning stage, then I put a little bit of more detail, and then even more detail, and then finally I inked it. So you can see that the ink is actually quite a lot different than my original sketch, but that was just because I used the original sketch as a bit of um, uh, guidelines of where it kind of things should go, and then I was able to kind of place everything. Most people try to kind of just start and finish here with the final line work, and I can tell you that um, 
it doesn't really work out that way. Okay, enough of that. Let's let's now get started. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a sketch layer in Illustrator. So if we are <laughs> um, Illustrator just crashed. So let's just wait for it to kind of come back on. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. But we can use this time to uh, answer any questions that you may have. <laughs> How long did the Mario take you to create? Right, that took me an evening because I made a point to draw that very quickly. So that was about three hours. Um, um, and three hours kind of on and off just doing other stuff. But the thing is, I thought of the joke when I was driving home from work. And then I thought I should strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> because that's a very time sensitive joke. I think about, you know, everybody's doing a spoof of Adele. I think about um, a week or two weeks, everyone will be over it. <laughs> it's, it's really good. I'm really, really excited to learn how to do something like that. I'm struggling a little bit. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Good to hear. All right. So let's get started now. What I want to do is um, first, um, you will notice that whenever I put a pencil stick down, it's quite thick and it's like 100% um, ink that goes down. One good thing about Illustrator versus Photoshop is I can always go back in and change these lines and move them around. So they're not actually, they don't blend into one, even though it looks like they are. We can blend them into one later if we wish, but it's not essential. The first thing that I want to do is play around with the opacity of my brush. And if I put down the opacity to maybe about 20%, it allows me to start um, putting out, you know, like that uh, uh, mock-up placement sketch that I did for Mario first. I can start doing that and start kind of building up on my stroke. As you can see, um, the, there's a lot of strokes going on here. And a system that is quite slow may have problems trying to um, keep up. However, we can always delete that later if we, if we needed to. I'm going to make the pen stroke a little bit larger so you can see what's going on. Um, when you start building up on it, it just helps you not commit to the line straight away and start just working on the shape if you needed it to. Now, I'm not 100% sure what I'm drawing here. Um, I always default to a specific character, so I think that's what's kind of happening here. And um, what I'm doing now is just simply kind of working out what the pose is going to be. And as you can see, I can be quite free with the pencil stroke. Like I'm like, okay, look, it doesn't matter if it's quite a big stroke. It's actually better for me because that means I'm not getting too worried about the smaller details. One of my art teachers always said to me, always go from the, <laughs> always go from the um, general idea to the particular. So that's kind of what I'm going to kind of try and do here. Um, I haven't really thought about what they would look like in a little while, um, but hey, let's let's give that a try. Good suggestion, Wayne. Okay, now that I'm happy with the overall sketch, you can see there's so many strokes kind of happening here. What I can do is go back into my original one and just call this layer sketch. Okay, good, good. Um, select all that. Um, what I'm doing here is I am dimming my sketch layer to about 50%. Come on, dim. 
Uh, 50%. Oh, let's go 20. Why aren't you dimming? Okay, fine, be that way. <laughs> I'm going to select everything and just dim it even lower over here on the opacity. It's not playing today. It's okay that I didn't get it all, but that's fine. So about 4 or 5%. And that's okay. This is just going to allow me to just have my general guide of where everything should be. And I'm never actually going to use that or see that one again. Now I can create a new layer. And with that new layer, I'm going to start adding some more details to my sketching layer. So I normally call this my sketch 2. Now, I'm a little bit conscious of how long this could possibly take. And to do a full illustration, it's might take a long time, so I'm just going to do, be very basic with this. Um, okay, I'm going to put the stroke down a little bit so I can actually get in there with more detail. Um, a little bit smaller. Okay, this is just kind of helping me carve out my character from the detail that's already there. Okay. Now, I really wasn't planning on what I was going to draw. So I'm just kind of making it up as I'm going. Now, you will notice I'm doing this technique that's called draw through your shapes. What this means is I'm not focusing on the leg and I'm not focusing on the, or on the back or the arm individually. I'm actually drawing everything and allowing all the shapes to overlap. This allows me to be able to kind of place everything where it should be. You see, one arm, like, people make the mistake of drawing arms and legs individually. They don't understand that one body part can actually greatly affect how another part of the body is kind of working. All right, as I'm sure you guys have realized that I'm having trouble trying to concentrate on the illustration and talking at the same time. It's uh, a new experience for me. I found it actually easier to uh, do a sketch on paper and then to scan it in or take a photo and then mm -hmm. upload it to the computer and, and redraw it that way. Yeah, that, that's definitely one way of kind of doing that. Uh, I guess I just kind of got used to doing this because it's a very easy time-saving mode and also allows you to kind of um, edit the image up as you kind of go along. I, I prefer, like, I like both, and I certainly end this straight to, to paper, but I guess I just become more accustomed to working digitally because it just, if I need to go ahead and be like, I don't really like the arm right now, I can always select parts of it and move it around without having to erase or change too much up. And that's one advantage that this has over the other one. 
Okay, cool. Um, so that's sketch two. Uh, and now I'm going to see you can always remove them and not really worry too much about it. And then now the next one's going to be my actual inking layer. We can call it inking or outline or whatever. This is the one that you want to be a lot more um, careful with your line work. And as you can see, I have been very um, loose. But now I'm going to zoom in and actually start to get quite um, quite uh, specific with my line work. Now, I'm going to put the opacity all the way back up to 100. I'm going to put the line work mainly to about 0.75 because this allows me to have more precision. And now the inking begins. Now this can be the, the, the longest part, or uh, sorry, this can take the most amount of time because you really want to get good line work. What I'm doing here is I'm just deleting the line a couple of times until I'm happy with something. Now, Notice I'm trying to get it all done in one line. This allows me to have a smoother line to work with. If you're finding it difficult to see your line work over um, the sketch layer underneath, you could always change the color of the sketch layer underneath to something that makes it a little bit more easy to see. And in that way, when your inking gets over the top, you can quite see your you can see your inking be quite uh, prominent. Okay. Um. Now this is uh, what I said before, I, I am not actually using my uh, Cintiq, I'm using a secondary monitor, so my hand and my um, eyes are actually, like, I'm not actually looking directly into what I'm drawing, which is an unusual experience for me. Okay guys, um, I'm just asking questions or uh, feel free to talk about stuff. Uh, because I'm just going to concentrate on this for a little bit and I could certainly answer your questions if you need it. Okay. Carlos, is this some peak, the one with the image actually on the tablet? That's it. That's the one. There's a lot of talk about um, the new iPad Pro. Do you have any thoughts on that? I haven't used one myself yet, but I've seen a lot of videos of a Disney artist actually using it. To be honest, um, I think it'll be a great little fun uh, kind of activity thing to do, but it definitely, um, it only runs apps. So until it's able to run Photoshop, it will be kind of limited in the kind of things that you can do. Uh, Microsoft's um, Surface Pro, which is I used to have the, the first one that came out. That one actually allows you to run Photoshop itself. And what's good about that one is you can actually fully do illustrations and, and they're ready to, to, to go print out. But I don't think you can run Photoshop on the new iPad. But I mean, it'll be fun to play with. I'm so glad that I showed you my illustrations before I did this because I guess maybe with some of this very loose line work you might be losing confidence a little bit. <laughs> okay. It's actually um, really good to see the process. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to kind of rush through this illustration so that I can actually get into the coloring stage. 
Uh, I think they have three fingers. Thank you. Um, okay, as you can see here, this line's overlapping, and I don't love it. So what I can do is I select the line, and then I spin my bra uh, my uh, stylus around to become an eraser, and then you can just dab on what I don't want to see, and it just goes away. There we go. <clears throat> okay, it's not time to be precious. That'll do. What's the the uh, the biggest size of a Wacom board? Because um, I've got uh, quite a small one. You can get quite large ones that actually uh, are the size of a monitor instead. Um, so you normally see them, like if you're watching those uh, Pixar extras or how they did something, you can actually see quite huge ones. I think they are something like 25 inch or something like that, but I kind of like the size of a monitor. Mine isn't, mine's, uh, I believe, 13 or 21, I forget. Inches are not something I can keep in mind. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's just finish this up and put you all out of your misery. There was one that I saw, sorry, there was one that I saw earlier in the year. Um, uh, it was a, a Doctor Who artist and you could actually see them uh, drawing or painting on the board itself, and I've never seen a Wacom. Well, I don't know what it's called, but it's it, it's a tablet of some sort. That's it looks fantastic. Current, that's the current one that I'm that I'm using, and it's the one that we were discussing. It's called Cintiq. Aha. Um. Whew, okay. <laughs> I should probably give him the other arm. And what would be the, the average price for, for one of those? It used to, they used to be quite expensive, um, but uh, I guess that's relative, really. Um, now they've gone to about $1,000 is what you're looking at for the HD models. Better start saving up your pennies. <laughs> But if you, that's the one that you can draw directly onto the screen, but for an entry model, if you just want to use a normal uh, tablet just to draw, uh, they start about $140, I believe, from JB Hi-Fi. I know Aldi was having a crazy sale on them. They were having like Wacom tablets, like just really basic ones, small ones, for about $40 uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one of my other friends got one. All right, cool. Let's just go with this. <laughs> oh, well, need to knee pads. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to color this in. And it's super easy to do that, especially with this using the techniques that we are, um, have been using. So I'm going to disable the sketchy layer. And then I'm going to create a new layer. And the new layer has to be underneath inkling layer, because that means that the inkling layer will not be affected by the color. So I'm going to call this one layer color. And now I can start picking the colors I want to use. I normally like to use colors I've chosen myself. That's just a personal preference. Like I like to mix my own colors. But let's just go with that. Now, as long as inkling layer is on top, I want to lock inkling layer so you don't accidentally uh, damage it or move it around because that would be very, very annoying. And now I'm going to use quite a thicker brush, so maybe a 0.6, and just start putting my color down. Ooh, 0.6 is a bit big, 
but point three. And you can see you can just color in as normal. It looks like you're overriding or going over the top of your outline, but that's just kind of giving you a bit of an idea of where things are going to go, and then when you let go, it's colored in. Okay, I'm not going to be too worried about not staying within the line because I actually think with this particular uh, drawing, it actually looks a little bit like it suits. Now, you notice that I'm going over everything. Like, it doesn't matter if there's this is going to be a different color, it doesn't matter if this is going to be yellow or whatever, I'm just going to put the base color down first and that's okay. Now I can do this two ways, I can either create a new layer and just create a new color per layer or I could just trust myself and kind of just uh, work on the same layer. I'm just going to work on the same layer and just do this kind of quickly. Let's go with a yellow for his tummy. Um, okay. Now, I don't know why, my favorite one was Raphael, but the entire time while drawing this, I just kept picturing Michelangelo. It just means orange for those who weren't fans. Now, if you find that you chose a color and you don't particularly love it, you can always just select it again and just double click somewhere in the color and go with a different one. I'm going to go with a dark green for the shell instead of brown. And then use a brown. for um, the belt. Okay. Um, Awesome. Okay, just one more in color. Okay, so here we have our character colored in. Good time. 
great. Now, if you wanted to add a little bit of detail, you can. I would normally, uh, extra detail with color, you can. Um, I would normally lock this layer down so don't accidentally wreck it, and that's cool. I'm going to create a new layer and uh, call it details. And here I can add random little things like maybe imperfections. I'm not sure if you've seen the new Ninja Turtles cartoons, but Michelangelo um, has freckles now. So <laughs> I can grab a little bit of the color and start adding some freckles. Let's see, what else could I add to this? Um, So freckles on his shoulders. And do you see how with very minimal effort, you can start to, OK, those freckles are around. You can start thinking, oh, he's got kind of reptilian skin. If I wanted to, I can even choose an even darker color and start giving him nails. Um, choose a color, maybe uh, yellow, and start adding a little bit of detail on the shell. Um, maybe a bit of an orange. And start adding a couple of creases to his um, whatever this part's called. <laughs> okay, cool. And you can see the difference. It like it's only very small and very minor, but you can see how much elevated the illustration gets just by having those tiny bits of detail here and there. Now I know I'm running a little bit over time. I think I've only scheduled you guys for like 20 minutes and I'm already on to an hour. But how about I teach you one last thing and then you guys can go. So hopefully I'm not taking up too much of your day. You guys have all quiet, so I'm just going to continue and just think that that's all fine. <laughs> Okay, the final step is adding some shading. Uh, what you want to do is you want to choose a shading color that's going to kind of show you what kind of environment the character is in. Usually, a really good indicator is to choose a color that is kind of like the color of the light or the color of the environment around. So, the, um, so if he was out in the blue sky, you might want to choose a blue shadow. Let me just show you in practice. So let's say he's on an environment. Like this. And we're going to add All right, cool. So what I want to do is I want to choose a color that's going to be the very similar, if not the same, as the environment. Uh, choose a brand new layer, call this one shading, a shadow, or whatever you choose. And then simply start drawing where the shading or the light source or the, where the shadows would fall in the character depending on the light source. I'm going to choose the light source to be over here on the corner on the top left, and then, so everything that's on the right will have shading. So again, grab my brush, grab a four, maybe. Grab that color again. Um, get my layers. Okay, now I can start drawing where the shadow is going to go. But obviously, that doesn't look quite right. Like for whatever reason, you're like, okay, uh, that's just blue over the top. Over here on the top, you can click on the opacity and choose multiply. 
this is going to allow me to have that color that I pick blend with the color underneath to give me shading. You won't do it all in one stroke because otherwise you can run the problem of having this kind of overlapping effect. Wait, I have an idea. Let's do that at the end. So I'm going to turn the opacity, uh, the um, blending mode to normal. Then I'm just going to put where I want all the shadows to be. Hopefully this works. We're all experimenting together, so that's great. Okay, now let's see. I'm going to, oh, a couple here. I'm going to select all of this, this layer and then change that to, oh, no, it didn't work. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you, you get a little bit of overlap here, but hey, there we go. He's got like a painterly feel to him. Wait, I have an idea. This is a little bit off uh, topic, like off um, what you can do is if you have a whole bunch of things over the top of each other, you can actually merge them together. You would have to expand the appearance to create them into shapes like that. Then you go into Pathfinder and blend them all into one. So over here, all of those should unite. So where is unite? There we go. Cool. And now, ha, it worked. Bizarre. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry I took so much of your time. Um, hopefully, that is good. And I know I got a little bit rushed towards the end, but it's just because we we're running so over time. Obviously, got to sign that. <laughs> Right, are there any questions or anything you guys want to talk to me about here? Alrighty guys, um, I will let you go and then you guys can go ahead and create your wonderful, wonderful illustrations. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions, uh, send me through a class message. Other than that, um, have a good one.